Chris Fry, you are the new uh, Managing Director of uh, Temple. Thanks for joining us here at uh, Tomorrow's Rail. Thank you. Um, sustainable solutions uh, is what we really need for all our infrastructure challenges. Um, are we delivering these sustainable solutions? I think we are in part. I think we've got some examples. So here we are at Tomorrow's Rail. We were talking this morning about some of the schemes such as Crossrail where they've embraced the idea that it isn't just about a railway, it isn't just about the stations, the new stations or the enhanced stations, it's about the public realm that that can create, it's about the, the experience of the customers, uh, the passengers and so on. And on the other hand, there are lots of schemes going in. There are. Um, I, I was looking up the fact, doing a bit of fact finding for this morning's session, 2,500 odd railway stations around the country and a lot of those are, are in need of a bit of an upgrade or have had an upgrade and, and we've had some missed opportunities there. We're not actually thinking about um, using those as assets for our renewable energy systems for example. Uh, we've got Blackfriars Bridge in London but most stations don't have solar photovoltaic panels. Um, even though most other development we're building these days would have that naturally as a matter of course. So um, there's, um, there's some great exemplar projects. I think the challenge with sustainable solutions now is to roll that out, raise the bar across the board on, yeah. on uh, the rest of the projects we're taking forward. Is there, is there a risk when we talk about sustainable solutions that there's an over-focus on green, uh, the green agenda, uh, the low-carbon agenda, rather than, I suppose, making our, our infrastructure fit for people, fit for customers? Yeah, and the sustainability concept is, is all about trying to bring those things together. Um, uh, it, it is um, absolutely, if you look at the railways, you look at um, transport infrastructure generally, the best place to start really is about the passenger, yeah. the passenger experience um, and looking at the use of technology, how that can um, help and enhance that. And, and just the idea that people don't mind spending time on trains, yeah. they don't mind spending time at stations if there are the facilities if it's uh, allowing them to do the things they want to do. Yeah. Uh, so Wi-Fi connectivity and all those kinds of things are really important. And how you get into yeah. the infrastructure in the first place and the fact you have got somewhere you can you can drop off your bike or you can do whatever you want to do. Um, I think the environmental part um, is then uh, is perhaps a longer term aspect of it and there's some value to be, to be generated there um, from both. Because, I mean, perhaps is there, is, there a, is there a criticism about the infrastructure sector that we do focus on concrete, uh, steel, uh, big, big investments, rather than focusing on the, the phone in everyone's pocket and the power that the digital revolution can bring to infrastructure? I think that's right. I think um, that uh, the, the, the way that the construction industry is now thinking about some of these challenges, I think, I think, I think it's now getting everybody aligned is the challenge, everybody to think the same way yeah. so that um, those who are uh, the clients and the designers and so on are, are thinking the same way as the contractors. Some of the contractors have got some great solutions, yeah. but they're not necessarily being asked to employ them uh, in, in the same way. So they're actually being asked to um, uh, design or replicate um, some pretty old, outdated technology. But if you ask them a slightly different question, then they'd be saying, well, actually, we might be looking at some new materials here. We may be designing off-site. We may be uh, and building off-site uh, and actually cutting out a lot of the inefficiency we have, whether that's inefficiency in, in cost and time, whether that's the HGVs on the roads, or whether that's just the sheer uh, materials that ends up in the, in the construction skips otherwise. But of course, it is that link with, uh, I suppose, the link between green and efficiency and better business and better lives, of course, which is at the heart of your, uh, your concept, was it's the, the turquoise city, the smart city of the future, mm. trying to make, uh, I suppose, green be part of a much bigger picture. That's right, and, it, and it's, it's important that um, the green agenda or indeed the community focused and the, uh, the passage or the technology piece, each of those needs to work out how to um, join the dots with that bigger picture and demonstrate the value, how yeah. that can actually create value uh, onto those projects. Yeah. So that was that, what that concept's really about yeah. on the turquoise cities and, and, and seeing where that can be made to work in a practical way yeah. on particular projects, particular sites. Now we're seeing a lot more sites around London and around um, the rest of the country where there is a great opportunity to regenerate yeah. and you can just sort of stop and think and join the dots a little bit. Places like Barking Riverside, mm -hmm. uh, Meridian Water in Enfield where they've got an opportunity enabled by some transport infrastructure mm -hmm to um, actually look at how all those things can work together um, and, and actually create some value as yeah. well as a better place and a, and a, and a lower carbon solution.
So we are seeing continued support by George Osborne, David Cameron, uh, across the whole political spectrum for investment in infrastructure, the Northern Hub, uh, backing major projects such as High Speed 2, Crossroad 2. Um, what's the future for Temple? Uh, where, are you, where are you going? Yeah, so we've, we've, put, we've set out our 2020 strategy, as you'd expect, and we've, we've chunked that down to look at where are we now and where do we want to, to be over those years and beyond. And um, we've got uh, a, great, um, uh, a great set of projects, great set of people working around infrastructure, and this, this idea of housing and development-enabled infrastructure. So working on those projects, either working with the house builders or working with the um, infrastructure clients, um, because we understand how those things fit together. Yeah. So those are great kinds of projects for us. And we're also increasingly stepping up our work in the energy sector. Um, energy sector is obviously in its own right uh, a very wide and varied and complex sector. We've got a lot of experience in certain aspects of that, such as uh, some of the wind energy and so on. But also, energy is such a great facilitator yeah. for rail infrastructure, for road infrastructure, because everything is getting electrified, yeah. and so the electricity demand, but the opportunities that that creates as well. Um, so looking at, um, ultimately, the great sorts of projects where we think we can add some specific value for clients is uh, perhaps where you bring that together with transport infrastructure, yeah. uh, development and, and placemaking, uh, and also some uh, energy, uh, the energy infrastructure to facilitate that as well. It's a great, a great future opportunities for you uh, there at Temple. So I look forward to keeping an eye on what's going on. Thanks for joining us here, Chris. Thank you, Andrew. Thanks a lot.